ready to play? Let's rescue your digital office. Today's game challenge is digital security. So we're going to go ahead and click into here. Um, talking about digital security of how you keep yourself and your stuff safe as you navigate the internet, work online, and such. Um, our don't think just do task would be to actually run the computer, your computer updates and do a reboot and turn on two-factor authentication for your online banking accounts. To get a little bit deeper into our setting up, simple, a simple setup for your digital security, I talk about running updates, but let's just talk a little bit about what that means. Um, you want to do the updates for your PC or your Mac. You want to do the updates for your browser. You want to do the updates for any virus protection programs you have, um, your smartphone updates, your tablets, because these updates keep you safe on the internet. They um, generally, when companies put out, you know, when Microsoft puts out an update for the PC, when Apple puts out an update for the Mac, a lot of what goes into those updates are patching up security holes so that, you know, they can, can prevent uh, you becoming infected with the new viruses that are out there because the, the scammers and the hackers and the, the, um, the bad guys are always trying to find new ways to get into your systems and they're getting better and better at it. And so the companies trying to protect us are also getting better and better at it. So a quick um, tutorial on how to make sure you're doing an update on your devices. We're going to go ahead and start by looking at the PC. So I'm going to swipe over to the PC here. Um, when you have a PC, every time you shut down your computer, you'll click on your, your shut down and you'll see the power symbol. If it has a little dot, that means there's an update available. And that update, you just simply hit update and restart and that will go through that, that restarting process and do the updates and, and get you there. So um, it can take some time. So you kind of want to make sure that, that you are um, in a place where you can do the updates. So that uh, PC is going to um, spend some time doing some updates. Um, the same thing with the Mac. If you are on a Mac, you'll find your updates in the upper left corner of your screen. And then you'll go to uh, System Settings. And that will bring up, this is the most recent version of the Mac. This screen here has recently changed because of a, an update. But you're going to want to look for um, the words. So these words, System Settings is important. And then we're going to look for your General, which is... Um, in the other view of, of the Mac, it might be a little icon and you're going to look for the icon called software updates. And so when you click on that, you'll click on a button that says, you know, check for updates. And then if there is an update available, it'll show up here. And the same thing, you will, will do a restart and that process of restarting will uh, install the update. So it is a good idea to to reboot your computers on a, a pretty regular basis just to make sure that you get all these updo updates. Um, it's, it's more imperative on the PC because updates happen faster and, and more, they're more common. But the Mac also has them and often you will get a notification saying that there is a Mac update available. And it looks like I will be doing one tonight. I'm going to minimize that. Um, so beyond making sure you do your updates, you also want to check on your, your computer security dashboards. And so with the PC, my PC, I believe it has updated itself. So let's go swipe over to the PC. Uh, we don't want to end our session. We're going to keep on our, our session to view this screen. So down here, this little arrow, you click this up, you're going to look for this little shield. The shield, if it needs some sort of security behavior done, um, it'll have a, a triangle or an exclamation point or something like that. So you'll just open up the screen and it will tell you whether or not there's anything in your computer that needs some attention. And it's, it's reasonably good about saying, well, hey, do this thing. And then you're, you'll be a nice little green check mark and all will be well with your, your update security world. Um, 
And we're going to swipe back on over to the Mac here. The Mac doesn't have quite as much of a security uh, dashboard that the, the PC has. It all keeps it kind of uh, within its own, own systems. We've got, you know, the privacy and security stuff that you can look at and see where everything is. But all in all, the Mac doesn't need quite as intensive uh, security dashboards. What we do have is we have virus protection programs, and one that I like is Malwarebytes. And so my little Malwarebytes is, connection is up here on the Mac. Um, I don't have it installed on this PC, I don't think. Uh, but it would show up down here if I did. I should probably get that installed eventually. I don't use the PC much except for demonstrations. But the, the Malwarebytes is also usually an icon on your computer, so we're going to go ahead and, and type in here here and go look for Malwarebytes. So Malwarebytes shows up and we open it and it brings up this lovely little window where you can scan for your viruses. So you just you know do a quick scan. Usually it's set to automatically scan on a regular basis but you can do it proactively and it will scan your computer see if there's anything naughty on it or anything questionable. Often it may detect something and put it in quarantine uh, if it detects something, it doesn't mean that there is anything necessarily naughty on your computer. It's just something that the malware bytes or whatever virus protection program you use uh, is um, suspicious of this item. In which case, that program will put it in a quarantine and isolated situation so that in the next couple of days, as you navigate in your computer, if you discover that um, your computer is starting to run not the way that it should, it could be that something important was put in that quarantine. If your computer seems to work just fine and, and there's no apparent downside to, um, to putting those items in quarantine, you can come back and delete them. Um, we're going to let this scan kind of run in the background as we continue to talk. Um, beyond your, your virus protection programs, um, I do have a recommend malware bytes. Uh, um, go check that out. It is a uh, subscription that you would have to purchase. Um, but you can download that and set it up uh, with relative ease. And I'm always happy to help you if you need that sort of help. Um, the next thing on our list here is to set up two-factor authentication for your important accounts. And your important accounts I consider to be your email accounts, your social media accounts, banking accounts, password management accounts, uh, CRM and ESP systems. So CRM as in your customer management programs, if you have a business and you have like a follow-up system where, you know, that you, you keep track of all your people, um, or an email service provider system like a, a MailChimp or ConvertKit or something that sends out regular email newsletters. Um, and if you own any sort of uh, domain hosting or registration, I would do two-factor authentication on those um, as well. And, and two-factor authentication, for those who, who may not know what those specific words mean, um, when I say two-factor authentication, I mean when you're going into your account, so you're going to your bank account, you enter your username, often your email address, and then you enter your password, then that account may say, hey, we've sent you an email with, with these six-digit codes, type in the code here. That email is a second factor authentication. Uh, sometimes it's also a text or it may even be a um, authenticator app that you can use, but some secondary way of getting you access to your important accounts so that if a potential hacker is trying to guess your password with their very sophisticated programs, um, your, your accounts will detect, hey, someone's trying to get in, is it you? Um, in, in which case you can say, ooh, that's not me. You don't need to be concerned. Just because they've tried to get into your account does not mean they have your password. It just means they're trying. And, and generally, there isn't anything that you need to do if, if you get a notice that someone is trying to get into your account. You can generally just not let them. You know, don't, don't give them that security code. Um, so setting up that two-factor authentication is a very, very useful security feature of keeping your important information secure. 
So, and as we were talking, our malware bytes has finished its scan, or at least I thought it did. Oh, it's starting. It's it's still scanning. I thought that it had showed it was done. It didn't. It's not. So our next section here is to up level your passwords. So in, in thinking of, of some hacker or computer program that the hackers use to try to guess passwords, it's called a brute force attack where they're just trying a bunch of things to see what hits. Um, having a good password, a high quality, high secure password is your strongest security, your first line of defense. Uh, if you have a password like password or one, two, three, four, that's your low hanging fruit. Those accounts are going to be the first accounts that are hacked into. Um, as we move up the scale, you know, if you have a password that has both numbers, letters, uppercase and lowercase, um, that's always a, also a lower security, but it's better than just, just a word. The danger on these two that is, is even more than the fact that it's a simple password is that often people will choose, this is my password for everything. In which case, if those hackers have, you know, uh, are trying your, your email address and this one password on, on Google, and let's say they get in, they, they hack it, they're going to try it on, on a Facebook account. They're going to try it on a Snapchat account. They're going to try it on a Microsoft account. They're going to try it on all of these other accounts because people often will use the same password for everything. So if they get one password, they're going to try it on all the other things. Um, our next level of security is the password pattern. And that's where you develop a kind of a systematic way of choosing passwords uh, so that they are all different and they have numbers, letters, and special characters arranged in a way that you can remember them. Um, and I talk about that in the Mastering Your Passwords Game Challenge if you want to check that out. These three low level secure, lower security type passwords um, are what you might use if you're trying to avoid a password manager. These these higher level secure passwords usually need a password manager so that you could manage them and be able to always remember what your passwords are or not need to remember what your passwords are. Um, a password manager is a program like um, Dashlane or 1Password or as you may have heard in the news, LastPass. Password managers are, they're kind of like banks in the fact that they're designed to hold secure things securely. However, they're also a place that might get robbed or, or attempt to, you know, there would be attempts at robbery of these high secure things. Um, the hack that happened upon LastPass, it was a pretty severe one. And we're only moderately concerned um, simply because the vaults in a password manager like LastPass are encrypted so that even the LastPass developers, they can't access the data without your password. However, if your password is password or 1234, that, that information would decrypt the data in the password manager. And so the hackers in that, that particular news article, they got these encrypted vaults from LastPass customers. So if your password in your LastPass vault is a solid password with numbers, letters, special characters, um, then you're most likely going to be more secure. It's going to take that hacker a lot longer to try to hack into the information. But it is a risk and everything comes with risk. So the best thing that you could do would actually still be to have a, a password manager so that you can have these really long passwords. Because if you have a really long password, that's, that's a, a mix of numbers, letters, special characters, and so on, then it's going to be much harder for those hackers to hack into those. And, and, and harder by meaning amount of time. Like a password down here is only gonna take a couple seconds for a password hacker program to, to hit on. Whereas a password like this one here, for them to guess upon this password, it's going to take them probably a hundred thousand years. So it's all a matter of time. So that is, that is passwords. And of course, 
the whole concept of passwords can be highly, highly interesting um, if you want to do a little bit further research into those. Uh, the next security thing that I, I would recommend is to set up the Find My feature on your various devices, on either your Apple device or your PC device. Um, for instructions on how to do that and how to actually, you know, look up where your devices are, uh, just do an internet search. Start with Find My and then enter your, your brand. So here we've got the Find My. Even if you type in a find my phone into a search, you're going to find, you know, find your Google phone. You'll find your find my Apple phone, find my Samsung phone. So you'll find all these things with these, these instructions on how to set that up. And that can be super useful eventually if you keep forgetting your phone or your, um, your computer places. So that's a quick, uh, a quick setup uh, for digital security. Um, you can join me in the future for, for more hands-on interactive training in the Lux Lab. Right now, I am hosting that every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And you can click the Join Today button, and that will take you to the page where you can um, sign up to get the, the uh, access information and reminders. So thank you for joining me in this game challenge on digital security. And we will talk to you later um, in the Lux Lab. Thank you all for joining me. And until next time, I will see you all about the internet.